Hello guys, welcome to another video on C++ algorithms and data structures. Today I will talk about multi-threading in C++. So if you have a process running on your computer, that process can run internally multiple threads of executions which run independently, but they may or may not talk to each other, synchronize and communicate. So what exactly do we cover? We cover threads which are created using std thread. Uh, also, I'm covering how to create tasks which is done using std async. And then I will tell you how you can do this using pointer to functions, functors, function objects, or lambda functions. Let's get started. First thing is how do we create threads using pointer to functions in uh, using std thread? Imagine I want to calculate the total sum of all the numbers between this range, start to end. I can write a function called accumulate range, and it can have these two parameters, begin and end of the range, and then the output can go inside this reference. So I can have a for loop that goes from start to end, calculates everything, and there's no return value because the return value is this reference. Now, if the start and end, if this range is too large, the execution time of this function would be really long. So here comes multi-threading. What if I break this range into two threads? First thread would talk on the first half, uh, and then the second thread would work on the second half. And then each thread, once it's done, puts the partial sum inside a variable called partial sum, zero, thread two would put it, uh, puts it in partial sum one. And then at the end, I can calculate the total value using partial sum zero plus partial sum one. That's the main idea. And let's see how we can implement this in C++. So remember, this was our function. It has a reference that acts as a return value. It also has two other parameters, which are start and end. In order to create a thread that calls this function, you just simply write std thread, the name of your thread. This first parameter to the constructor of the thread would be the name of this function, which we just introduced. And this is how we pass this as a pointer to function to the thread. Now, after this, whatever parameter that comes after the first parameter are actually the parameters that are passed to this function. So this function has one, two, and three. Now we have one, two, and three parameters that are passed to this function. And if you notice, the, uh, the first parameter is wrapped inside a city reference. And this is because everything is passed by value uh, when you create a thread, unless you wrap it inside std reference. So just having this and uh, sign here is not enough for passing by value. You also have to wrap it inside a reference, std reference. All right, so now once we did this, uh, the, our main function would be very simple. So you create a vector of your partial sums. You create two threads, the first one, uh, its output goes into partial sum zero. Second one output goes to partial sum one. Uh, the start and beginning of the range for the first one is zero and step, step being the uh, half of this really large number. And then the second one works from step to two multiplied by step would be like uh, this really large number. Now, as soon as you create these threads, they get executed. We have two other functions that we call, which are called join. Once you call join, we basically are waiting for these two uh, threads to finish execution. So you, the, the execution of main might get blocked for a long time or short time, depending on how long these two will take. Once these two lines are executed, it's guaranteed that these two uh, uh, threads are uh, done executing. Once this is done, the total value would be the total sum of all the values inside your partial sum. So I have partial sum begin and end, uh, and I'm using std accumulate to, uh, to sum all of them together. I print the values out and then I print the total value. Now, let's see how this works in practice. You, I have put a link to my GitHub. You can download this and run it yourself, which I recommend you do. If you want to do this, it's going to be inside uh, the source directory under main, and the name of the file would be main.cc. Again, we create two threads. Um, we wait for them 
to finish and then we calculate. In order to run this, I put instructions. I'm using Bazel to run and build my uh, C++ files. But if you want to use um, uh, uh, vanilla G++, you can also use this command. So for this uh, video, I'm using uh, Bazel. So let's use Bazel, print it out here. Once this is done, I should see two partial values for the output of thread one and thread two. And then this would be the total sum, which is four, a bunch of nines, and five, a bunch of zeros. This is my total sum of the range for that really large number here. So up to now, I showed you how to uh, have two threads. What if you want to have more than two threads, like tens of threads or even thousands of threads? So in order to do this, usually, uh, because there's like thousands of threads and we can't create thousands of variables, we put them all inside a thread. So in this case, I'm showing if we have 10 threads, we create a vector of threads, um, and uh, this is our vector of partial sums, and then we push, we create threads one by one, and we push them inside this vector of threads. So basically, each thread takes a pointer to the accumulate range function that we de uh, defined before. It takes the, uh, the corresponding index inside partial sums as its output value. We wrap it in a reference, and then these are the begin and end uh, of the range. Once you do this, the, the threads gets, get created one after another. And then now, in order to wait for them, all of them to finish, I can iterate through the vector of threads. I can wait for all of them to join. Once all of them are joined, I can calculate, just like before, uh, using SCD accumulate to calculate all the partial sum values to get my total sum. So let's see this one in practice. Uh, again, the file name would be vector of threads main. Now, if you want to run it using Bazel or G++, again, I'm using Bazel. And let's run and see what happens here. So now I have 10 threads. Once I run this, I get a vector of 10 partial sums. And then the last, uh, the total would be uh, the same number that we just saw before, but I calculated in 10 threads. Now, if you want, you can add to the number of threads. Let's do 100 threads and see what happens. You can see that my partial sums are now, uh, there's 100 of them, and then my total sum is still the same. Let's see if we can go even higher with thousands of threads. All right, now my, you can see now I have a thousand partial values and then my, the total value is still the same. All right, moving on. What do we need to take away from uh, creating threads? So as I mentioned before, you create a thread using std thread. The first parameter is the pointer to the function that you want that thread to execute. The rest of them, the rest of the parameters are the parameters that are passed to this function. If you want uh, uh, anything to be passed as a reference, wrap it inside uh, a CD reference because there's no return value. As soon as you create a, create a thread, the thread also gets executed. Uh, you, you need to use the join function to wait for that function, that thread to finish. The second alternative would be creating threads using functors. If you remember, functor is just a struct or a class that overloads or define this method operator. The operator takes two value, uh, can, can take multiple parameters and um, basically calculates a function on these parameters. In this case, I'm showing just, just a simple comparator. And then rather than pointer to functions, you can use functors or function objects. This object, you create an object of this type and you pass it. That's because this parenthesis is that because we are passing an object of this class. Anyways, let's see how we can create a functor that does the same thing, calculating the total sum between the start and end in a range. So imagine uh, this class, it's an, it's, we call it accumulate functor. It overloads operator, takes two variables, start and end, uh, for begin and end of our range. It basically iterates through this range and puts the result inside an internal member variable 
of this class. So we could do like we did before to pass a reference to this operator. But instead, I want to show you guys how you can basically put the result inside the object itself. So once you do this, just like before, you create a, a vector of threads. You could, now we can have a vector of functors. In this case, I have a pointer to functors. And then inside my loop, I create an object uh, of this functor. And then I push them one by one, putting uh, the first parameter being the object itself. And then these two are the parameters that are passed to the operator function inside the functor. Uh, and then the functor object itself, a pointer to it, goes inside this uh, vector. Now, notice I passed, instead of point, uh, passing uh, the object itself, I wrapped it inside the reference. And that's because, I, as I mentioned, everything is passed by value. I would like to... Uh, I would like this std thread to work on a reference of the same object so that later on I can use the sum member of this functor to take the result. So after this is done, I'm waiting for all of them to finish using join and then I'm using the sum member variable to calculate the total. Let's see how this works in practice. The file name in my repo is called uh, functors main, uh, which is basically the code that I just showed you. Again, we have 10 threads. So let's call, uh, again, I'm running it with Bazel. And uh, let's run this. I get 10 partial values and the value is still the same. What do you need to take away from functors? So functors work very similar to uh, a pointer to functions, except that if you want to, uh, you, if you want, you can put your return value inside the function object itself. And then in that case, you have to wrap the function object inside a reference. So this way, we probably uh, um, don't need that partial sum vector that we had before. Instead, you have to have a, a vector of your functors. One last method to create threads is to use lambda functions. If you remember, lambda function is a function that is not tied to any identifier. It's kind of like an a, anonymous uh, function. And the format of it is that it usually has a capture section. It has a parameter section. It has this uh, arrow thing that uh, specifies what the return type is and the function body. So usually this is used when you want to pass a very short and quick function. Rather than using a pointer to a function, you just write the entire body of the function in line in your code. So for example, here, the entire body of the function is written here. Now let's see how we can use this uh, uh, method, lambda function, to calculate the total number of values in a range. So in this case, I'm creating a lambda function. It takes i, partial sum vector, and the step, uh, and it takes them through this captured section. Once you have this, you can Iterate through the beginning of the step to the end of the step, calculate the sum of all the values, and then put them inside the partial sum uh, related to that thread. So basically what I wanted to do was to modify our for loop um, that I had before, and I was creating this uh, SD threads, put them one by one inside the threads. So now this whole thing can be passed as a parameter to a std thread, just like this. So I'm taking i, partial sum, which is defined outside of this, and step is also defined outside of this, and I'm creating my threads one by one. If you want to see the whole code, uh, this is my partial sum definition. The step is just like before. My thread vector is like before. So I'm just um, creating my threads using this uh, lambda function that we just defined, the rest is exactly the same. We just wait for them to join, we accumulate, and then we print the output. If you want to see this in practice, it's under file called lambda.main. Um, this part is my lambda function definition. So i is taken from here, partial sum is taken from here, uh, this is my vector of partial sums. And then step is the number of uh, elements, which is this large number, divided by how many threads I want. Let's go again 100 in this case. And this is a very short and concise way. It's probably readable when this lambda function is small, but as this becomes a really large function, you probably want to use pointer to a function which is easier to read 
uh, at least for some people. Anyways, how do we run this? Um, again, I'm using Bazel method. Uh, just copy and paste this here. And then we should see 100 partial sums, just like before, and then the value is still the same. Now, what you need to take away, basically, uh, this provides an easy way to define your function in line, and then your input and output can be captured through this capture section. It's kind of like an easy and lazy way to define threads. The rest is really similar to pointer to functions and functors. All right, moving on. Now, there's one more way of creating threads using std async. So if you remember, for creating threads, we use um, one, uh, one of the three methods. In this case, uh, I'm showing pointer to function. And then uh, we pass the parameters. And then we, at the end, we, um, we waited for the thread to finish using join. Now, for if, you're, if your function really wants to return a value, if you really insist that my function wants to return a value rather than uh, passing a reference, you can still do that but instead of doing std thread we use std async that means we want this function to be executed asynchronously now uh, so what we pass this function the first parameter just like before is the name of this function and then the last two parameters are actually the parameters that are passed to this function so the name of the function goes first the parameters to this function go next uh, these are my function parameters. Now, as soon as I write this, there's going to be this, this uh, uh, thread, which we call it task now, gets executed. How do we get the return value? Instead of join, you call get. And then get, unlike join, has a return value, which actually has this return value. So if I want to put everything together, we still have a vector of tasks. For now, don't worry about this type of the task. Let's say I just define a, a, a vector of tasks. So my for loop is now very simple. I put in, I push the task one by one by calling std async constructor. The first parameter is now the name of the function get range sum, which returns a value. And then the second and third parameters are the parameters that are passed to this function. How do I read the values, the outputs? I can now directly use t.get as I iterate my task. Get basically makes sure if the task is not ended yet, it blocks the execution, waits until the, uh, um, the result is ready. Once it's ready, it passes it, and then we uh, use it to calculate our total. Now, let me go back to the type of this task. It's just that std async uh, the, its return value is of type future don't get scared by its name all it means is that it's a type that its value comes in the future namely after calling t.get so I'm, I'm defining task to be a vector of futures and each future type is the return type of the function that i just introduced u in 64. all right so now let's see what happens in practice um, let's go to async main and then maybe in this case I have 20 threads this is the uh, definition of my task I have my for loop push them one by one and uh, I initialize the begin and end of my range and I print uh, the return value so this is my range sum the return value and let's see how that works. Again, I'm using the Bazel method. Put it here. I'm getting 10 partial values. And this is the final value, which is like before. All right, moving on. As a homework assignment, you guys can modify my code to create tasks. I showed you how to do it using a pointer to function, which is having the name here. You could also do this using functors or lambda functions. I'll leave that to you guys as a homework assignment. Now, what do you need to take away? Tasks are created using std async. We don't call them threads anymore. They can have a return value. So this is probably a more straightforward of creating threads and do multi-threading. Uh, and uh, instead of uh, calling join, we call, uh, we call get function. And then each task by default starts as soon as you create it. Uh, there's a way to change this. You can create a task and not 
started, check the SD async dogs. Uh, it's a very simple parameter passed to this, and you can uh, change the behavior of creation of tasks. All right, in summary, I covered threads, how to create them um, using std thread. Basically, they don't return a value. You have to use a reference. Or you can use task using std async. The return value, they're more straightforward. I personally rather using task than threads. Either way, you can do pointer to functions, you can use functors, or you can use uh, lambda functions. What is next? So just creating threads is very easy, it's very straightforward, but that's not uh, all that is to it, to um, uh, multi-threading. Uh, threads need to communicate to each other, use shared resources, and those are done by using concepts such as critical section, using mutex and logs and conditional variables. And there's more advanced um, way of uh, multi-threading that's called thread pool. Uh, these are, I leave these for uh, a future video. If you guys want me to um, talk about this in the next video, please uh, leave a comment. So I'd be more than happy to cover them later. Uh, and I hope to see you everyone in the next video. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you.